last time I assembled this CNC machine and now I'm finally gonna test it out. But first I'm gonna tell you what it is for because I didn't quite explain it in my last video. Now it would probably be a good idea to explain what I'm actually gonna use this for. Well, 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 well. Have you ever wondered how geckos climb walls? They can stick to completely flat surfaces because of something called Van der Waals force. Imagine you have two neutral atoms close to each other. The atom might be neutral overall, but as the electrons orbit, there might be more of them on one side of the atom, and so that side is negatively charged, while the other one is positive. This imbalance of charges also induces a charge in the second atom, which makes them attract. We usually don't experience Van der Waals force, because surfaces generally aren't flat, so the atoms don't get close enough to each other. But geckos have this fine structure on their feet, which fills out any bumps and provides them with a high contact area. As a result, the Van der Waals force takes effect and they stick to the wall. We can imitate the gecko's skin and make this sharp wedge structure. As the wedge is bent over, the artificial gecko skin sticks to the surface, imitating the gecko. It also has a property of working only in one direction, which can be used to make robotic grippers, or even a whole gecko robot. The process of making it is also simple in principle. A block of wax is used as the base for a mold, and then a razor blade is repeatedly pressed into the block creating wedge-shaped indents. A silicone polymer is poured into the mold, and a backing material is attached. The adhesive is cured and ready to go. And that's what it looks like. As I was watching this very testing video, I figured I could probably make a CNC specifically for making gecko skin. Not only would it be the first of its kind, but it shouldn't be that hard, since it only needs two axes and machines only wax. It would also help me gain some experience, as I want to build a CNC mill for cutting aluminum in the future. Now that you know the purpose of this CNC, let's try it out. To make the gecko skin pattern, the tool needs to drive into the wax at an angle, so I coded a function that does linear interpolation between two points, and I decided to test it on a piece of cardboard. After taking the worst measurements known to mankind, I compared it with the software value, and it was the same. So I coded a toolpath to make the gecko skin pattern, and I've made it about 30 to 100 times bigger so I could see what was going on. Otherwise it would be smaller than the thickness of the marker. After that I made the toolpath smaller and smaller. All the tests went fine, so I started preparing the wax. The mold is made out of two pieces, so I fully expected the wax to spill out a bit. I just let it solidify, and then I poured more wax in, and waited for that to solidify as well. I've just noticed that the mold has kind of bulged out because of the weight of the wax, and this may or may not be a problem in the future. Since I had designed the mold to have a removable bottom, I expected it would be easy to take out the wax, but this turned out not to be the case. I had to run a knife around the mold and only then was I able to take out the wax. After clamping the wax into my shitty vise, there was nothing stopping me from making the gecko skin pattern, apart from the razor blade I had forgot to install. And of course I managed to cut myself, because I pushed on it while I was mounting it to the tool holder. Now there was truly nothing stopping me. I started by facing the top face. So I move the tool head until it touches the workpiece, then I press set zero, this zeroes out the coordinates, and relative to this point I ran the facing operation, where the tool head moves across the workpiece, taking more material with each pass. After a few passes, the top face is completely flat. At least that's what should have happened. Turns out wax is quite slippy. And because of the wise orientation, which I chose because I wanted to have a larger workspace, the block of wax was constantly slipping out of the wise. I can't find a way to clamp the block of wax, so I'm probably gonna have to redesign the wise. And it also makes a lot of mess. It's been a long time since I last worked on this CNC machine. I was busy editing the Hexipod video, so all the clips you saw are two months old. 
but now I'm back and I want to finish it. The biggest problem was obviously the vise, so I redesigned it. I added this pattern to the jaws, so the workpiece won't slip as much. There was also a problem with the wax getting into the lead screw and the bearings, and this isn't that big of a problem, because it actually provides some lubrication, but it was annoying to clean. So I want to add this plastic sheet under the vise, which is gonna be attached at the back, and I also printed these supports, which are gonna hold the sheet at the front, so it will catch all the wax. I've also designed this new mold, which should make it easy to take out the wax, and it also shouldn't spill. Alright, let's get back to work. At first I attached the sheet under the vise, and then I bolted the two supports at the front. Alright, the card is at the front limit position, so I can tape the sheet to the back side, and then I'm gonna move the card all the way to the back, and only then I'm gonna tape the front side. Yeah, this works. I know it looks like shit, but it was a last minute add-on, and it's better than nothing, because most of the wax is gonna be here, and hopefully it won't jam the CNC. So far it hasn't. I decided to add hot glue, because I figured that the tape wasn't enough. This looks like garbage. The CNC might look much worse right now, but I don't care, because I won't have to clean the wax off my table. I know there are some things I could have added instead of this ugly plastic sheet, but I want to test the main function of this machine first and then I can worry about the details like aesthetics. I haven't worked on this project for two months, so I was just gonna check the code, but then I decided not to. You might call it laziness, I call it trusting my past self. The workpiece is gonna have the same dimensions, so everything should work out the same. For the wax, I'm just using some old candles, and I'm gonna melt them with my new soldering station, outside, because I don't want to pose any fire hazard, and then I'm just gonna pour it into the mold. If this spills, I'm fucked. I'm not sure if the plastic melted, or if the mold just wasn't watertight, but the wax started spilling out. Other than the spillage, the mold worked perfectly. It was easy to take out the wax, and the wax was even quite square, because I had reinforced the mold. I even managed to not cut myself while installing the razor blade. I then clamped the workpiece into the new vise, and I was ready to machine the part. Ok, now I can start facing the top. I first moved the tool so it touched the workpiece, and then I pressed the facing button. What the fuck? Nothing happened, because I forgot to zero out the coordinates. So after scratching my head, I pressed the set zero button and the facing button again, and it started machining. After facing the top, I could finally run the main code which creates the gecko skin pattern. I wasn't sure how well it was gonna machine, so I divided the workpiece into four parts. The first part is just the normal gecko skin pattern, the second part scales it by two, the third part scales it by five, and the last part makes the pattern ten times bigger. I did this because I thought that the bigger pattern would probably be easier to machine. You can hear the stepper motors change directions quicker as it machines the smallest pattern. Although I'm not sure if my neighbors find it as interesting as I do. The sheet not only worked, but it didn't even get jammed up, probably because of the tight tolerances of the screw and the bearings. I took the workpiece out, shook off the wax chips, and then I looked at it under a microscope. This doesn't look the best. There are some wedges, but they're not even, 
and there's not that many of them. I think the wax just isn't strong enough or the machining was poor. Despite the poor results, I decided to give it a try. So I mixed the silicone and I poured it onto the wax. I wait for it to solidify and then I was left with a piece of gecko skin. As expected, the gecko skin doesn't really work. The machining obviously didn't went well. That could be because the wax doesn't have the right properties or the feeds and speeds weren't right, or the pattern is just wrong. So I'm gonna do some more research, I'm gonna play with these settings, and hopefully I'll have a working gecko skin by the next video.